This is Elizabeth Creamer. That's my picture up there on the left. I'll tell you two things about myself. Um, I am just finished a term as president of the Mixed Method International Research Association, retired faculty member, happily an author with SAGE of a textbook about integration in mixed methods called Fully Integrated Mixed Methods Research. In this little quickie YouTube, I want to tell you a little bit about MIRA and the kind of initiatives we're launching this year with our new president, Kathy Collins. Uh, and the person on our right is our executive director, Jeff Anderson. I want to tell you this from two perspectives. I want to tell you what you can get out of MIRA, and then I want to tell you some things that you can contribute to MIRA. So MIRA is a relatively young organization. It's hard to think of it, but it's only been around since 2013, thanks to the initiatives of some very energetic founders. I was the fifth president. We now have our sixth president. What's really unusual about Mix, uh, MIRA is its global uh, breadth and its intent to create a community and a forum um, about mixed methods research that crosses many content and air contents and content areas. We're trying to promote dialogue among a diverse set of scholarship scholars and we're also um, very active in helping people find communities that are near nearby. So I can offer you a pretty long list of benefits of belonging to MIRA. I'll talk about from your own career in terms of connecting to an international uh, community, in terms of getting visibility for your own work and opportunities to present. I'll also present it as a place that you can um, volunteer and contribute to initiatives. We have, for instance, had many, many student volunteers in our new initiative to bring up a series, a very ambitious in initiative where we're bringing up a series of online modules. So in addition to that, we have a series of resources that we make available both through webinars and through the online modules, which I tell you, I'll tell you more about, which are all part of the professional development opportunities we award. I mentioned that we've had a fairly um, brief history. Here's a list of our presidents, and I, I acknowledge them. These people were all elected by the membership. You can see that I'm here fifth, and Kathy Collins is our current president and Judith Schunenbaum from the University of Vienna will be coming in next as our president. Many of the people who are now involved in MIRA at the executive board level are volunteers who step forward. Many of them I would describe as mid-career people who are interested again in partnering. So MIRA has elected positions, the president, the treasurer, the secretary, members at large. We run, the, uh, run elections in May and June, but we also have very uh, influential appointed positions that really carry the majority of the work. So we have a marketing person, which is Michelle Nichols here. We have a membership person, which is Sarah Montz here. We have a governance person, who's, um, Sophia Johnson, she's in Baltimore, and we have a conference person who works with conferences, Tim Guterman. If you were thinking about starting an affiliate or a chapter, Sarah Muntz would be the person to talk about. If you are in a position to host a conference, a regional conference, then Tim Guterman down here would be the person to contact. We are doing more right now with chapters and affiliates. Chap both chapters and affiliates have formal relationships with us. We have chapters in three or four regions of the world. This is part of the initiative of our new um, president, 
Many people start small and informally. They offer a workshop. They um, offer a drive-in one-day conference. And then they begin to think more ambitiously about trying to create an organization, a network that's, that's regionally bound. So this is a partial list of people that are formally affiliated with Mira. And when you're formally affiliated with Mira, there are some benefits, including a discounted membership rate for your members, as well as we include information about your events in our Sunday night news blast, which is the way that we communicate um, widely with our membership. We have a an active student chapter. We have a very active Caribbean chapter. We have a new European chapter. We have an old Malaysian chapter, which has not been active for a while. And our kind of the star in our crown is the Japan affiliate, uh, which holds a regular conference every year. Peter Rollins and his colleagues in New Zealand are hosting a conference in uh, from the Australia, so Australia Asia chapter that will be in New Zealand in December and uh, there's paperwork afoot to create a Latin American chapter so that reinforces our global uh, sort of our global span we are continuing to explore ways to make that relationship even better we have really quite modest membership rates, especially for students and for members of developing nations. I show you these in part. This is the annual membership fees, so 65 for regular members all the way down to five for developing nations and eight for student members. You can see here that mem affiliate members who belong both to an affiliate ch or chapter and MIRA receive a $25 discount on their regular rate, on the regular membership rate. So one way we support chapters and affiliate is by offering its members reduced membership rate with Mira. One of our two big initiatives for professional development is the webinar series, and then the second one is more like a course, and those are our online modules. We offer webinars free and open to the public about once a month. Uh, there's information about them on the MIRA webpage, and I've got that a little bit later. And these are a range, on a range of topics, um, from introductory topics to advanced. They're conducted online. They're conducted in real time. They have a small interactive component. Um, and they are not a big commitment of time. They're about an hour. The YouTubes from the webinars are, are um, linked in the member resources. So you have to be a member to access the videos. And there's almost 30 of them. But you do not have to be a member to participate in webinars. And that's certainly a very good way to get your toes in the water um, about uh, mixed methods. In the spring, for the first time, we anticipate offering some web webinars in languages other than English so that we can reach uh, the non-English, um, the group of people who are interested in mixed methods, but English isn't their primary language. Our most ambitious agenda is this online module which was literally launched this week and this week is October 2019th. This has been a four-year initiative that started I think with the third president Tony Amaguzi and is carried through through Cheryl Pulf, myself and now Kathy Collins. Uh, the leader in Shaker on this is Peggy Shannon Baker. She has uh, collected a team of people who have made this possible. Right now we have 23 different online modules. These are like I said are like a class. They usually are three parts. They have a quiz, they have guided questions, they have downloadable materials. Completing one of these is um, will result in a certificate of completion. 
you can register through for a MOOC, and this is the fall, the first fall set of courses uh, through the member resources page on the Mira uh, on the Mira page. Classes rotate uh, every four months, so you'll see this season runs from October one to March one. There's a month break, and then on May one, we bring up eight or not, I guess it's 10 more modules. So this will be um, a very exciting initiative, a very comprehensive way to get a good sense of the diverse perspectives about mixed methods. So of course, like any professional association, we put a lot of energy into our global conferences. This is where we've held global conferences. We had an extremely successful conference in Vienna hosted by our incoming president, Judith Schunenbaum. We are in the process right now of negotiating the next site, 2021. Uh, at the Vienna Global Conference, we had people from 39 different countries. So these are truly a place not only to see the scholars whose names you recognize from the literature, to do workshops, to partner with people from all over the world. I mentioned the 39 countries. This is the uh, 38. I said 39, but it's 38. This is the distribution of the number of people from different parts of the world. And you'll see they range from the Middle East to South America to the Europe to several countries in Africa, New Zealand, and several countries in Asia. So that kind of underscores our broad geographical mission. We had a bonanza year this year with regional conferences, all but one are finished. Um, so the group in the Caribbean hosted a conference in the University of West Indies. Actually, it was in Trinidad, so this might, this is not actually accurate. In September, we were just in Japan, uh, and they had a very successful conference there. And then this is the really big one coming up in Wellington, New Zealand. This is also um, a regional conference in that, that they are pretty much managing it all. We have a very active social, net, um, social media presence thanks to our um, marketing person, Michelle Nichols. And here are some handles. You can at any time go in there and share information about your own publications about events that you're hosting uh, and communicate with the wider community. So I hope this has been helpful and just kind of giving you an overview. I will tell you it is a wonderful community to be part of. It's a warm, inviting community of people with very, very diverse interests. So thanks for listening and I'll wrap up there.